A few days ago, I got a message from a friend in India asking me this question on uh, how to discern the voice of God. He is a new Christian and he said uh, he has heard a lot of people say, listen to the voice of God, hear from God, but he does not know what that means. And I found out also that there are so many Christians and even in the church that do not know what it means to say God is speaking or have a kind of discernment of the voice of the Spirit. I am doing this uh, broadcast today so that, uh, so that people like this will learn one or two things. I have about 16 issues I'd like to discuss with you concerning how to hear when God speak. Now, one thing I want to tell you is that God does not keep malice. He speaks always. Now, the first condition is you must be a child of God. If this is true, it is your right to hear from your father. Only a bastard, permit that word, will speak and his father will not respond to him. Number two, if you have a relationship with your father, he must speak to you. This father that we are talking about is a relationship conscious father, open and ready 247. This father, that is the God we are talking about, is a speaking father. He doesn't keep malice. Number three, one way to communicate with him is reading his words, the Bible. Listen to this. There is nothing new God wants to tell you that he has not said in his word. When you want to hear from him, pick your Bible. Number four, prayer is another medium of discussion with him. Know this and have peace. Prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. Stop monopolizing your prayer session with God. God is telling you, keep quiet. Let me speak with you. Let me speak with you. But many of us, we, are, we just go on in a monologue. Enough. Learn how to keep quiet and hear from God. There are times God will speak to you. The word will drop into you. I will speak more on this issue. Number five. So whenever you are praying or reading the Bible, Go with a heart of expectation that God will speak to me today. He is always speaking. But have a pen and a paper near you always. Be ready to write what drops into your mind. Be ready to take action. Number six, don't be far from congregational prayers. Don't be far from someone of notable preachers your mind is at peace with. Someone like me, there are about five preachers I cannot do without. Every day, I will always search for their messages to hear the current speakings of God through them. Develop such habits. Number seven, come up hither. Set yourself apart. Book appointment with God when you want instructions from him. Don't just think that God is your houseboy that you can hijack anywhere, anyhow, at any time. Of course, your relationship with him will get to that level later when you are onto him 247. But start gradually. Create a place and a regular time where you invite him to sit with you in a discussion. Number eight, God speaks gently. What he says will bring peace. He humbles you. Often what he says could sound ridiculous to you because it defeats your ego and it defeats your pride. But it will ultimately bring peace to your mind. That is God. God is peace. Number nine, study God. He will not tell any pastor or prophet anything he has not told you first. Stop going to anyone to ask what God has said. God doesn't break protocol. You first, then others. Look at Samuel. He called Samuel first. So many people like that. He will speak to them first before speaking to other people. You can only go to these other people that you believe to confirm what God has said. Number 10, 
When God speaks to you repeatedly and you don't take action, he will move to the next person. He doesn't waste ideas. Number 11, those ideas that come to your mind, like intuition, uh, thoughts, inkling, feelings, dreams, you know, respect them, entertain them. When they hit you repeatedly, it could be God speaking to you. You are permitted to test them. Test all spirit by telling God to confirm them to your spouse or to your pastor or to your mentor or to someone you believe you are on the same page with. God will do it. If you still did not move, forget it. He doesn't waste his ideas. Twelve, God does not violate his words in the Bible. He exalts his word more than his name. Anything you hear that is not consistent with the Bible is not of God. If anyone says this revelation is special, this revelation is from God, and it does not align with the Bible, run away. Don't believe such people. Number 13, depending on the level of your relationship with God, seek wise counsel. Seek advice from trusted spiritually mature Christian, they can offer insights and perspectives that might help you discern the voice of God. 14. Don't forget the place of the Holy Spirit. That gentle spirit is not an intruder. He doesn't force himself on people. He goes on his own. Invite him. He came here to replace Jesus. Jesus lived in Israel. The Holy Spirit is a global character. His job is to guide and teach you all things. Stop marginalizing the Holy Spirit. Use him. 15. You have to be patient with God. He is not a microwave God who answers questions, pa, 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 as we say here in Nigeria. Of course, there are times he answers questions immediately. And there are times he wants you to go through an experience for you to learn some truth after which the answers will come. Be patient with God. And while he keeps you waiting, the challenge you are bothered about will not kill you. The pains will not overcome you because he has promised that he will never permit anything bigger than you to come to you. So if an experience confronts you, believe me, it is your size. You have the capacity to control it. You have the capacity to confront it. 16. God answers in three ways. Yes. No. Not now. Again. Yes. No. Not now. There are times you will get a straight no from God. He knows the end from the beginning. Sometimes that no could mean not now. Maybe you are not mature enough to handle what you are asking him to do. So he wants you to be mature enough before he answers. So he says, not yet. Don't be fussy when you know you have done all you could and God has not answered you. Wait for it. It will come. Lastly, number 17. When God has not spoken, don't take action. Don't move when God has not moved. If you move, you move in vain. You will be back to square one. Put your personal mechanism in place to check when God is in what you are doing or when God has endorsed what you want to do. For someone like me, is the peace. The only way I know God is in something is the peace I have in my mind. I believe you have gained something today. This is Mentoring Masterclass. Thank you. God be with you.